Hi everyone, welcome to DIY Ideas. So today we're doing another really cool summer project. So this is a summer idea for decorating your maybe garden or apartment or room. So it's out of a regular marmalade jar that I turned into some tea light holders as you can see. And yeah, if you want to see how you can do this too, stay tuned. So I'm using Rico Design Creative Nature. The name is right here. So it's 50 grams per 100 meters in each spool. The needle size is 3.5 millimeters, but I will be doing this with a bit bigger needle. So I have my 6 millimeter one here. Also, the wool that we have is not the whole spool since we need just a little bit of it. So this is less than half of the original spool. So you'll see that it's a really cool project with not a lot of material. So we're going to start from the bottom and we're kind of going to go up and then we'll make the hangers on top. So let's start with a magic ring first. So we will be doing rounds, but I'll also show you how to really start from the top. So let's do our magic ring. Take the thread like this and make a little ring around your fingers and go through with your needle and take the thread to the other side. At the same time, we're taking our fingers out of the ring and that's basically it. So now we can move on. The wool is pretty sturdy and stable for this project. Let's do two chains for the height and yeah, so the wool is probably not the best option for clothes because it might be too rough but for bags or decorative stuff it should work just fine. So keep in mind and let's continue. So the magic ring you can adjust by pulling the beginning thread. So anyway, two for the height, now we will be doing half treble crochets. There we go. So third stitch total. Six. Eight. 9 and 10. Now pull tight. Not the needle, put that back and we have now our base. So we need to close this up with a slip stitch. Pull nicely and start again with two chains and again do another half treble into the same spot and again throughout the whole round just go with half trebles. So always two for each spot. So here I am, let's do a slip stitch again. And now I'll continue in just chains and a couple of slip stitches and that's all. So before we move on, let me show you. When you work with different jars, this might not work as a size, but feel free to make it bigger or smaller. So depending on your jar or whatever you decide to work with. So fit the size to what you need. 
and just do additions. So here I had 20 stitches and in the next you could do an addition into every second stitch and so on. But since I'm working with this jar and this fits, I'll continue from here. So yeah, the next round would be every second stitch with an addition and then every third and then every fourth and fifth. So anyway, let's do three for the height. Leave two stitches out and do a slip stitch and repeat three chains. Skip two, slip stitch and repeat. So you might notice already that we are getting the shape that we want. Here was our first bow and now let's do again three chains and then just go through the loop and continue so we aren't counting or skipping stitches anymore. Just simply work with the loops that you have. And always around the loop from the last round. So it's gaining in height. Let's try it out. There we go. So for now it's good, but we need a bit more in height before it looks like we want it to. So here we are, I worked in rounds until I reached the height I wanted. It could have been taller if you wanted to, but I think this looks good already. And when we fold it or hold it like this on top, that way it's gonna be hanging later anyway. So the pattern is really pretty and also stretches a little bit. I did a couple of chains here, so three, and now I want to make holders or the hangers, straps, so whatever you want to call them. And I'll start here by doing about 30 to 40 chains, but you can also choose your own length. Ten, so times four, I think I'm gonna do 40. Now we can get to connecting the other side, so I'm crossing my straps kind of in an X, so I'm looking for the opposite side. So one handle is done and we have one for now, so when we put the jar inside it's gonna stretch and here would come another handle, so we are gonna do that the following way. Do three chains and move to the side. Here to the next bow and now we would or should be halfway between our handle ends and we want to do the second handle kind of crossing the first one. So you see that I'm not continuing anything so we're doing it here pretty loosely. 
I'll simply see that the handles are equally long. So let's go into the height and then we'll do the 40 chains. Here we need to connect it to the other side. Make sure it's in the middle and again do a slip stitch. So here are the crossing of our handles, so let me show you. Here they are, and here I did this side a bit higher, so I'll do the same on the other side. So we're doing some chains, so again, the three chain structure to reach the height of the other side we already did. There we are, so now I have a bit higher sides that align, and on the sides of them, the ones that are a bit lower set, and now we will pull the thread out and cut. We will weave this in, but let's check it first. So we are done, let's test it. Yep, that fits really nicely and looks really good. So here are the yellow and grey decorative tea light holders. These could also be used as different things, so you could maybe do hanging flower pots or maybe even as a gift idea for somebody. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section. You can also shoot us a thumbs up if you thought this was fun and would like to see more. You can also subscribe to our channel for free and that way stay updated with everything new that we post as well as check out older videos that we have already posted on the channel. So I thank you for watching DIY Ideas, I hope to see you in our next project, and until then, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!